Welcome everyone to the channel. How are you guys all doing? I hope everyone is doing well. So today, before we get started, please don't forget to hit that like, comment, share, and subscribe. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, please. We are trying to reach our 400 subscribers. We know it's doable. Come on, guys. Let's subscribe to the channel. Yeah. So today, what are we gonna do in War Thunder? Haven't checked for any dev vlogs or any news yet, but today we are jumping into our beginner's guide part two. Have you seen, have you, if you haven't seen uh, part one, go check it out. I will put a link to it. So basically, is this thing all available? Is it not available? It is available. All right, guys, but this I will be doing. I will be doing something on this later. Okay, cool. But anyway, let's get back into the video. We are going to be doing our beginner's guide part two. So in the first one, we did all of this stuff on your HUD here, on your uh, on your display or on your screen here. Okay. Now what we're basically going to do today is we are going to do nations and how to pick a nation, what to play with and modifications and crew skills. So this might be a little bit of a long video, I'm hoping not. I'm trying to keep the videos between like 20 minutes. So yeah, let's jump into it. But like I said, don't forget to hit that comment, share and subscribe. So. We can't start immediately with crew skills because you actually got to play the game to get crew skills. So now you log in the game, you see US, Germany, Russia, Great Britain, Japan, China, Italy, Sweden, uh, France, Sweden, Israel. Now you like sit there like me when I first played, I won't, for, I won't forget. I logged in and I was like, oh, battle click and I went for it. Not knowing what nation. Now relax, calm down, have a cigarette if you smoke, have a beer if you drink. And my suggestion for players to come in. Yeah, people also run for the major nations like America, Germany, and USSR. Don't do that. Uh, we, we got a guy on our channel that we are helping and trying to teach. And he's the guy that gave me the inspiration to do this video. He ran straight for Sweden. And then he's not doing good, not doing bad. And then we, we told him to come over and play Russia. Because Russia... Is a bit better than Sweden. Uh, they got better guns, better armor, blah blah blah, fish paste. But it will vary from person to person. Um, I'm not telling you to go play with Russia. I'm just telling you the story. And he doesn't want to play Russia because of certain world events. And we're trying to explain to him that this is a game. Leave the world events. It's a game. That's all this is. Um, but yeah. So my suggestion for picking a nation is start you at America. Now you're going to start off and you're just going to have a couple of tanks. Where's one that I have got only? No, like, yeah, you'll only have like reserve tanks here. Okay, so basically how this tree works, go to America. This is your researchable tree. So all of this you can research. You've got to play the game to get research. Depending on how you do in the game, depends on how much research you're going to get. So like this tank, you need 46,000 research points. So like I said, according to your game that you have, you'll get a a X amount of research, which will go to a vehicle that you research. And you've got different uh, lines running down. So you've got rank one, rank two, rank three, rank four, rank five, rank six, and that's like rank seven. And you'll see it'll go all through with helicopters. You got, there you go. And you've got now different things. I'm not gonna get too much involved because I don't know the helicopters too, too well. Aviation is basically the same as tanks. This is your researchable and you go from rank one all the way down to there to fighter jets F-16s um, Yeah, so this is researchable Okay, and then you got your blue water fleet, which is your like naval force. So same story. You've got uh, destroyers and destroyers and you've got destroyers coming down over there. Wow then same with your coastal fleet. This is now like torpedo boats and sub chasers and that. And they've got like different designations like motor torpedo boat, motor torpedo boat, motor torpedo boat. But then you come to like sub chasers. These are boats that are actually designed to hunt down submarines. 
So the Naval Tech Tree is still a bit of a mixed match. It's not as organized as air, as there's aviation and army. In aviation and army, you've got you've got your fighters, as you can see there in the card, you've got fighters. Uh, fighters, another row, but let's just go between it. You've got a naval fighter, na uh, fighter naval aircraft. You've got a light bomber, a hydroplane, and you've got naval aircraft, torpedo bomber. So you just go through it, you'll see the different things. Uh, I don't know, American tech tree. Then you've got front light bomber, and everything has got a different play style. Now remember that. You can't just take like a... F I don't know how to put it actually in words. Sub planes are more higher altitude than lower planes and all of that but it's very complicated i am trying to find a youtuber to 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 make a combined video with this with me that he can explain it someone that knows air better than i do so yeah it's it, it's it's very different like you got dive bombers you've got all of that and yeah it's more you you you, you got to pick and match what you want to take out what you want to do like in the ground forces you've got your light tanks medium tanks okay this is also a light tank and you got your spaa or anti-aircraft uh, platforms and then you got your tank destroyers so like that's a tank destroyer this is normally your tank the german light up is actually very nice it, 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 it's very better you got like tank destroyers spas a medium tank this is also a medium tank and then you got light tanks but you've also got tank destroyers so you got to look what you're researching guys that's basically what i'm trying to tell you uh, look what you're researching. My lineup is normally two tags, one tag destroyer and one SP S SPA. But depending also who I'm playing with. If I'm playing as the Americans, as you can see, I've got basically a tank lineup. If I'm playing as my Swedes lineup, I've got a, a tank destroyer, basically just tank destroyers in the lineup. Depending on the nation. I'll maybe have to do a, a, a separate tutorial on each nation, what I think, yeah, how is the play style. So, but now you guys we got another line on the right hand side here and this is premium and store packed vehicles and event vehicles so you can see i own quite a bit already yeah but this one with the funny g on it is from the gaijin market so you can only buy it from there and the prices are over exaggerated don't do it unless you've really got the money to spare and you really want the vehicle but don't just go buy there because nilly dilly okay the prices are over fucking exaggerated then the golden eagle you can purchase this for golden eagles if it's got a uh, like an eagle buy it and a price that comes out of that over there where the hell did i get two thousand golden eagles from oh that's for something else oh, okay i know i know that okay so yeah um that's for golden eagle purchase and you as you go down you'll see um 2900s was gold it's for golden eagle so you can buy it from there but the store packs are mainly from higher tier ranks than from lower tier like the the t30 is a, a, a gaijin marketplace vehicle that you can buy over exaggerated like i'm see uh, like i'm telling you guys the makova is also if you, ever you see this funny like type of dollar at type of sign that's marketplace um if you see this where it says pack 9.3 this is the xm1 general motors so that can be buy from gaijin store basically you go on you log on to the website and you buy it from there let's see if we can have if i've got any more uh yeah like yes um the leopard 2 pz btrl one two three it's pack it's a 10.0 you buy it from the gaijin store and they're all precisely the same this is a golden eagle purchase Aviation is precisely the same. You can buy with Golden Eagles and you can buy from Gaijin Market. Now, the ones from Gaijin Market is normally event vehicles. You get the event vehicles. Then if you get it like in a coupon thing, you can sell it on the, on the Gaijin Market. A lot of people do it. Then they get Gaijin Coin and they can take that. I don't know what the hell they do with it because you can't exchange it for anything else. You can't exchange it for real money. I don't know, maybe they buy other vehicles from the Gaijin store. I, I freaking don't know what they do with it. But I normally don't sell vehicles there. If I get something from an event, I keep it. Um, yeah, so the one with the like the, 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 the dollar at sign is an event vehicle that you get from events. And then the green ones are squadron vehicles. Let's also jump into that. 
Uh, let's see the Germans. Yeah, the green ones are squadron vehicles. So basically what that means, if you're in a squadron and you play together, you can put research into that vehicle and you can unlock it. I don't think I have started with any squadron vehicles. I think I am busy every time I play in a squadron. Yeah, I'm busy with uh, this aircraft from the British tech tree. I don't know why. I think I've never booted oh you can also purchase you can unlock this aircraft for 550 you can purchase it with with golden eagles if you want to i wouldn't do that guys i really wouldn't because a lot of people i think are not in squadrons or they just play casual with their friends so that's basically it that i can come over yeah this is the research line this is premium vehicles you can either get it from crafting events or the marketplace or you can buy it for golden eagles or as a pack vehicle on the gaijin store or you can get the green ones or the craft or the squadron vehicles and it's the same with naval it is the same oh bugger bollocks uh blue water coastal fleet it's precisely the same you can see you can buy this from the gaijin store Air Force helicopter, it's a squadron research one. You can buy that in a pack. And that you can buy from the Gaijin store. Like I'm saying, don't don't go waste money unless you really want the thing and you've got it spare. Now, when it comes to cruise skills, let me find one that I haven't invested. Uh, you know what? I think I might have quite a bit of cruise skill available to proceed. Oh, did I invest them all already? Yeah okay but i've been playing also a lot us okay now we got this one now this is your cruise skills yeah we covered this in the last video this is your card for your tank armor thickness and everything just cruise skills and this is just achievements that you can boot it you can mark achievements and put it in yeah so cruise skills help you to get a quicker loading a quicker repair quicker firefighting uh that your crews don't get knocked out so easily and all of that but we'll go through it individually crew training so your first one is your driver keen vision field repair agility visibility uh tank driving now every time you increase these modifications if you click on you can see the parameters total braking time 0 0.14 seconds to 0 0.14 i'm not gonna go through that i'm not a mathematical genius but it, it, it improves everything on your tank. It makes everything quicker. Uh, your gunner, you've got your yeah, keen vision, field repair, agility, vitality, targeting, range finding. Now, these are very important in my opinion. Um, if you go to the driver, what I would say is very important. Keen vision, I wouldn't really go with it because it's you that's seen it, not them. Field repair, I would go for with the driver. Agility, I would go for. Vitality and tank driving those are the most important but i would say tank driving uh what's the one that increases uh speed replacement withdrawal okay this one um health of a crew member these two i would go with are very important because um, a lot of people just shoot from the front so your driver is normally the first guy that that, that shits in a tank duel so yeah sort those two out then your gunner, I would go range finding if you use range finding. If you don't use range finding, then it's not so important. But range finding will help you later on in the game. So it is kind of important. Targeting. Um, yeah, but it's also, it depends on you, but it could help. Um, well, let's just read you quickly. Skill gun, targeting speed accuracy and experience gunners targets the both vertical horizon so it, it basically just helps your targeting so you can point there and the game will accuracy um yeah i would go with targeting range finding over here and field repair very important also agility i would also go for anything to do with survival is very important keen vision field repair is a very good one uh Vitality is a good one. Leadership, I don't know. Uh, leadership improves other skills. Okay, so it could be useful. Um, top 10%. It will help everything by 10%. So the more you invest in it, 
the better. Let's quickly just check something. Yeah, it's already plus one. So, so every time it will be plus one that you will add into it. So plus one, everything here. Tank loader. Now this is also a very nice one. The quicker you can get your load up, the quicker you can fire. So weapon reloading, vitality, agility, field, field repair, keen vision. I'll go with weapon reloading as priority. Vitality, there I'll go with that vitality as also the second one after crew repair. And then field repair I would go for as well. Radio operator, now what radio operator does is when you get the, the thing to use artillery, it makes it quicker to call in and it makes it more accurate. So it makes that circle a little bit smaller. So yeah, I would just go radio communication, artillery uh, strike calling time, artillery targeting accuracy. That's all I would go with for there for the time being. Logistics, crew speed, uh, repair speed, repair rank. There you can see I've already invested some points. Very important as well to go. And then we go qualifications. So now yeah, you spend some of your well-earned silver lions and you can upgrade your crew i'm gonna do it okay just for to show you so there upgrades everything by three you have increased the qualifications of the lvt a1 switch to this machine to see bonus so i switch to that machine and i will see a bonus there i've crewed next level i require is 40 so i have to upgrade but a trick how i do this and i normally do it like this i go with half half and i spread it out between all of them now not everyone's going to agree with my madness um this is just how i like to do it so then i know i get an even uh and uh, uh, what's the correct wording i am even between all the different machines and operatings of the tank that i'm getting not just out of one I'm getting out of everything the same almost. This is just how I like to do it. And with aircraft and naval, it's a bit different. There's less. But it's basic concept for this. And depending on what you want to play, tanks, naval, helis, or whatever. So now you see I'm upgraded almost everything. Damn, I've still got 900 points. Okay, it's not going to get me much more. But we'll go right through till we can. Okay, that's everything. Then you just go apply. Now you can see uh, uh, keen vision, absolute uh, detection, one uh, total of 1, 100 and 100, 111 meters. So you can go through this and you can go and see how it actually helps. Uh, my breaking time now is third, uh, 0 0.13 seconds from a base of 14. Yeah, so you guys can go through and see how this all helps. Now, we go to aviation. As you can see, I've only got like eight screw, screw skills here. You basically got keen vision, awareness, G tolerance. For aviation, that is my most, that's the... One of the things I would say is the most important, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not an expert at, at Navy aviation, uh, is G-tolerance and stamina. I would invest heavily, especially at G-tolerance. Fire accuracy, I still say it's got nothing to do with you. I would invest again in G-tolerance and stamina, lo uh, lo logistical services. Repair in, in, in mid-flight is basically you get shot down, spawn in a new plane and you go. So it doesn't really help. Web, this I reckon has got no real use, but inform me if I'm wrong. So I'm not going to cover too much in that. Then we go to fleet. Now you can see here you got quite a bit of yeah that you actually have to do leadership, crew integrability, radio communications, air target detection, surface target detection, distance, enemy torpedo detection ship controls fire prevention main caliber reloading speed auxiliary caliber reloading speed aa caliber reloading speed aa gunner accuracy auxiliary gunner accuracy fuse distance exit this is very important in naval in my opinion 
and when it comes to fire prevention is very important this is also very important to detect targets earlier um un unwatering time okay that's it get water out of your ship fire extinguisher breach repair survival leadership these three are very important uh, repair speed repair rank very important so naval's quite an interesting if you play it it's quite interesting it's got a lot of aspects to it that you need to focus on at once like shooting repairing fire prevention and that so the if you get those skills up you should do quite well i would focus on those for naval okay <sighs> guys we are gonna be a few more minutes let's go look at the vehicle parts here i never finished my thing about playing picking a nation but i will get back to that let's get a blank slate okay we'll take this i've spaded everything so now you, you come you got enough research points now it tells you you got to research something you've unlocked the first one which is normally parts that would be yeah uh, so he used there's an, a youtube i don't know if he still does it oxy he works for war thunder now and um, he does the streams and that um but he actually made a very nice series a while back uh, i don't think i'll be able to find it now but you can go look it up and it was parts research and how he said how to research his suggestion is research this 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 then this then this then this and very very nice actually but my th research motto for me is parts fire crew replacement then straight from there i go if there's any other type of ammunition i start researching any type of ammunition smoke i leave normally for last um but parts fire prevention crew replacement the types of ammo tracks a suspension filters transmission engine braking system then all of these and then whatever is left down there but it will hang off from player to player what you are playing who you are playing what you are playing if i am playing i'm playing my swedish they got very good ammo so my thing will be more along the line of the stabilizing the gun i'm not going to get into detail about all the different parts you guys can go see what it is all about because some of the stuff is straightforward self-explanatory i mean filters uh yeah crew replenishment is self-explanatory this is ammo adjustment fire so horizon weapon spread and all of that you guys can go look and then at the top yeah you've got backups for vehicles so you can either activate backups if you've got backups we did a video on that go check it out in the previous one or you can purchase backups a purchase for one backup is 30 golden eagles i wouldn't do it guys rather just do the battle pass and use the war bond shop and buy backups and then you can purchase talismans for 300 rand basically what a talisman does it takes an ordinary tech tree vehicle and turns it into a premium vehicle just gives you a bit more uh, silver lion earnings a bit more research and uh, earnings when you when you, you complete a battle and all of that that is basically it it just increases this over here so if you're really into it you can do it some people say it's better than go buying a a, a premium vehicle from from a gaijin market or from the store or for golden eagles i don't know i've never played around with it if i see a vehicle and i do like it I save up the bucks i buy the vehicle i play it i'm happy i move on that's how i operate so i never played around with the talisman thing but now the question what everybody wants to know how to pick a nation now this has landed me in hot waters before and i'm not going to tell you which nation is the best i'm not going to tell you which nation i think is the best i'm going to give a suggestion to you that's going to tell you try this and then you decide after you've tried this then you pick the nation that you want to start researching out and this you can go for naval air uh, uh helicopters i don't know about helicopters but naval air and tanks you can do it this way this is my opinion because so many players come into water the 
Eureka Nation, battle their asses off and then start swearing war thunder and saying it's a stupid game and it's useless and this Russian bias and it's America biased and it's German biased and Germany suffers and Russia suffers and but you don't got no concept about the game. So my suggestion is start you at the USS USA. Take your two reserve vehicles. It's the LV LVT A1 and the M to a four put them in your now you won't have all of these slots open like i've got choose crew choose crew now these vehicles and this is a very good vehicle guys i will tell you it's a very good vehicle uh see modifications you will have nothing yet it will be blank take these two vehicles spade them out Spade them out. When I mean spade them out, I mean research all of this on this one. Research all of this. You see, I, I didn't even do it. Okay. Research all of this on this vehicle and then move to the next nation. Germany. And then the same story. You pick your reserve vehicles over there. And where's the other reserve vehicle? Where's the frick? Oh, there's the other one. The 35T and the Panzer 3BE. Put them there. Spade them out. Move to USSR. Reserve vehicle is the BT-5 and the T-26. Very nice vehicle, but slow turret. Spade them out. Move to Great Britain. Take the reserve vehicles. I'm sure you guys are getting what I'm saying. Take the A-13 Mark One and the Trench Tractor One. Spade them out. I'm going to go through every nation. Japan, oh Japan, oh Japan. <laughs> Take the Haigo Core, whatever this bloody thing's name is, and then what's the other reserve vehicle? The Kini, and spade them out. China, same story. The, M the M8 LAC, and it will be the T26. Spade them out. The Italians, oh my Italians, the old Italians. The AB-41 and the L6-40, stroke 40, spade them out. I'm sure you guys are getting where I'm going with this, okay. Um, the French, oh, the French. Uh, and it's the H-39. Now, which was the other reserve vehicle for the French? Pollux. I can't... Oh, it's the AMD, not, 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 the, not the computer manufacturer. The AMD 35, spade them out. Sweden is the STRV M31 and the STRV M38, spade them out. Israel, stay away from now. Remember, you're a new player. This is not this is not made for you guys that have been playing War Thunder for the last 3,000 hours or 1,000 hours. This is for new player. This is battle rating six. Stay away from Israel. Leave them, leave them, leave them. To, okay, but you won't get them until you've unlocked britain six okay and then you get a feel for all the different countries and then you can go play a country that you feel more happier with that you are more comfortable play and then if you want to buy yourself the starter pack for those nations for that nation uh like for the british it's the cruiser the saint it's precisely the same as the one in the tech tree but it's just got a cooler camera um, that's all. Very cool camo. Uh, the aircraft. I can't remember which, what is the aircraft that comes with this. But anyway. Then start doing that. And then, yeah, take it from there. But play through all the reserve vehicles. Spade them out. Get a feel for which ones you would like to play more. And if you're feeling really brave, but like I said, I don't think you'll get it unless you've got level uh, 6 with the uh, British. But yeah. Do it that way and your game might be actually better because you'll learn also aspects from different countries like i never knew this japanese high need three is actually a very damn good tank destroyer at this vr you see guys so you learn as you go and, and that will help you to learn different nations and then you'll get a proper feel for what is a good nation what you'll be comfortable with playing and make not mistakes that a lot of people have made prior to you 
So that's my thoughts on this. This is part two of the beginners for beginners. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're trying to reach 400 subscribers. Thank you so much. Keep well, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.